The U.S. is condemning the launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile by North Korea that triggered an alert for residents in parts of Japan to seek shelter. South Korea says it believes the ICM, ICBM, which is North Korea's longest-range missile, may have failed in flight and landed in the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. So for more on this, I want to bring in Tom uh, Carrico. He is the director of the Missile Defense Project. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining us this morning. So it, it really feels sort of weekly. We're talking about yet another volley of missiles coming from North Korea. And of course, this coincides with these uh, military drills that the U.S. and South Korea are engaging in. And it's a bit of back and forth. Every time, you know, the U.S. and South Korea do something, North Korea does something and vice versa. So let's talk about these latest launches. These launches come... Um, a day after North Korea fired at least 23 missiles in one day. What does Kim Jong-un want at this point? And I'm sure there are many reasons for this happening right now. Yeah, I think the number's up to 25. Mm. Uh, uh, it keeps happening. We keep having to update the chart. Um, and, and I just want to put this in context that uh, I think they're up to about 60 launches this year. Uh, by comparison, I think the, the most they've ever launched in a single year was 25 uh, back in 2017 when things were all hot to trot with uh, uh, with President Trump. Right. Uh, so what do they want? I think they want attention. I think they're kind of uh, taking advantage of our distraction in Ukraine and things like that. And I think they want to uh, just put a little bit of, uh, of muscle around to kind of uh, convey to their neighbors, to South Korea and to Japan, uh, just that they're, they're here and they're, they're not going anywhere. So speaking of, you know, the message to neighbors, um, what of the response? What should the response be? What can we expect from the U.S.? You know, earlier this month as well, leaders uh, from South Korea and Japan and the U.S. vowed action if North Korea fired more missiles. We haven't actually seen anything tangible at this point besides the drills that were pre-scheduled and ongoing. You know, uh, one of the responses, and this tends to happen just about every time that uh, North Korea pops something off is usually within minutes. Uh, the South Koreans uh, conduct a, uh, a series of volleys themselves. Uh, I don't think they're matching them uh, tit for tat uh, in terms of the 25 of the past uh, a day or so. But what does that do? That conveys to North Korea uh, that if on a on a bad day they decide to do more than just uh, launch into the sea, uh, but to attack uh, the South or one of their neighbors, that they would get a very prompt response. In fact, I think you just showed the image of one of the South Korean uh, aircraft uh, launching a, launching one of the missiles there uh, as well. So so th there's going to be that kind of a response. At the same time, I think it's important to uh, not uh, overhype uh, and give them just more of the attention that they crave. There is, of course, the, the, the chance as well that they're kind of making all this noise in advance of a, of a renewed nuclear uh, underground test uh, as well, and we'll have to watch and, and see if that materializes. So let me ask you this question. You mentioned when things were hot to trot, your words, uh, when uh, President Trump was, was in charge. You know, now we have a new administration here in the U.S., as well as a new administration in South Korea. For some people who recall the Kim Jong-un love letters and, you know, the visits uh, to uh, the DMZ and stuff like that, um, it, it, it's going to appear as if relations were better under the Trump administration. We weren't seeing these missiles. But you have a better sense of what's, what was happening in North Korea then versus now. Sometimes North Korea could be very opaque. There's stuff happening. We can't see it. Were things better before in terms of relations with North Korea under the other administrations, both in South Korea and here? I guess it depends on what you mean by better. Mm. Uh, if uh, giving Kim a big hug and and giving him the attention and the profile that a, a summit with an American president is is better, perhaps. Uh, I think in, in some ways there's the risk, the long term risk uh, that that over normalized uh, the the regime. Uh, not that they don't have uh, their own uh, stability, but nevertheless, I, I tend to think that that was more problematic than helpful. Uh, so again, they're they're doing a bit of a uh, of a temper tantrum or showing off here uh, with this, not I would say 25 missiles, and by the way, about 100 artillery uh, shells over the past uh, day or two as well. So I guess I would be reluctant uh, to say that that was a better approach to uh, to give them the, the attention. All right, Tom, thank you so much. We always need context with this. It's difficult to figure out what's happening. Everything sounds so extreme all the time. So appreciate having you here. Thank you very much.